So we all know the real reason you came is Chance the Rapper. So we're going to play some music by him. Um, who knows who Chance the Rapper is? Raise your hand. That's so pretty good. If you don't know who he is, don't raise your hand because we don't want to embarrass anyone. But basically, this is Chance the Rapper. Um, a lot of his music is about Chicago and what makes Chicago great and also what makes Chicago really messed up and broken. Um, but as you can tell, his music injects a lot of joy and life and depth into what Chicago is. But that's not the only thing that Chance the Rapper does. He's also this guy. Um, we are Alex and Jean. We're one half of the Cheno for Mayor team. We're really excited to be here at Hack Night. Um, Cheno for Mayor is a campaign that proposes that Chance the Rapper should run for mayor of Chicago. It's not a political campaign. We don't have like a super PAC or uh, any funding at all. But instead, we like to think of it as an exercise in political imagination. We kind of sit at the intersection where net art meets memes meets grassroots organizing. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how to work with uh, narrative and media in your civic tech project. Uh, by media, we mean both like the press and also actual digital mediums that you would use to make a civic tech project. We're going to call out some of the successes and failures of our own project that are related to those two key themes. Uh, and we're going to have a focus on the lessons that we learned and how we think they might apply to things that you might be doing. So a really important piece of context that I think Alex covered a little bit, but I want to hit again, is that Chano is short for Chance. And Chance is a 24-year-old rapper from the south side of Chicago. He's from Chatham. If you've never heard his music, that was one of his songs, those angels that we just played for you. Um, I'm not going to play it again. Instead, I'm going to play another example of Chance that I think really speaks to a second side of him. In the video clip, Chance is, you may have seen this on the news, he's uh, giving a million dollar donation to CPS, and he's calling on other people, uh, specifically like other famous people and large corporations, to replicate that donation. He's trying to kind of lead uh, a campaign to uh, generate private funding for CPS. So we saw that and we thought that, um, let me see if it's going to play now. There you go. So many people know that Chance is a great rapper, but he's also a philanthropist. And I would say that in this capacity, he's kind of an activist working for just funding within CPS. And in Chance, uh, I see a lot of, I see a representation really of a lot of critical things that I think are missing from Chicago politics, like passion and a sense of excitement and engagement, and most importantly, a real concern for justice, particularly for low-income black and brown communities. So these are some of the themes that, that to me, that Chance represents and that inspired our work. And Alex is going to tell you a little bit about who we are and how we got to thinking about these themes together. Hey, uh, so this is the Chance for Mayor team. This is Jean, who in real life isn't animated. Um, and so Jean is incredible. She provided so much of the um, thinking and coding behind the site and built an amazing tweet bot. Um, this is Khalil, who isn't with us in the room today because he lives in Rhode Island, but um, all four of us have our hearts in Chicago and kind of met for the first time in Chicago. This is Bia, who is in the room today somewhere. Oh, hey, right here. Give a round of applause for Bia. Um, Bia did the, uh, the narrative, the design, the media. Basically, Bia carried a lot of... of really amazing weight on this project. And this is me. I did some of the writing, some of the coding. And um, so we're the team that made Chance for Mayor. Um, some fun facts about us is that we've only ever been in the same room together twice in our lives. And we managed most of the product process through a Twitter DM thread, which is not the way you should ever manage any process. Um, but that's how this worked. And so where did we meet? So we met at this coffee shop. Does this coffee shop look beautiful or what? <laughs> what do you think? 
Okay, well, it is beautiful. And this is a new coffee shop. Actually, Bia is one of the co-founders of this coffee shop. And it's called Build Coffee. It's on the south side. Yeah, okay, round of applause. Um, okay, so for those of you who are like, why are people so enthusiastic about this coffee shop? It's just a place where I you know, can buy coffee and plug in my laptop and sit for four hours. No. This is way more than a coffee shop. It's a community space. A ton of amazing nonprofits are uh, in the greater space called the Experimental Station. And every single Thursday, there's an event at uh, the coffee shop that's called Public Newsroom. And Public Newsroom brings together journalists, uh, civic technologists, citizens to talk about issues of the day in Chicago and um, really let journalists build new ideas with their audiences. And so that's where we all met. Um, the topic was the Chicago Fraternal Order of Police contracts. That's actually set to expire on Friday. So hot issue. And we were talking about this issue and basically all talking about how frustrated we felt at the state of Chicago politics. And we kind of started dreaming together about, okay, well, who, who inspires us in Chicago politics? Like, who is it that we really look to who's doing what we want out there instead of reinforcing systems of oppression and we came to Chance the Rapper I think because we had been just been watching that uh, million dollar CPS donation the other day. Yeah so some of the specific things that we got to talking about were all this mutual dissatisfaction that we had and uh, we didn't really know where to channel it. I think this slide shows a chunk of our opening letter to Chicago we were thinking about problems over the past six years that seem really dire to us, that, but that haven't translated to change on the city level. So things like the closing of 50 public schools, the shuttering of half of the city's mental health clinics, and the DOJ's finding of a pattern of civil rights violations among the CPD, which vindicated a lot of what black and brown activists had been saying for over a half century. And in spite of all of these, what felt like crises to us, it seemed like no one was prepared or even thinking about preparing to challenge the current administration on these issues in the 2019 mayoral election. So we spent some time asking each other, as Alex mentioned, like, what would a good mayor of Chicago look like to us? Uh, and as we talked, we realized that we, our criteria were actually pretty simple. We, um, we put it on this site like this. We said, we want a mayor who will fight for public education. We want a mayor who will reinvest in black and brown communities on the south and west sides. We want a mayor who will address our epidemic of gun violence without the brutality of police or prisons. And we want a mayor who will let the young people of Chicago lead. And we were talking, and, and we realized that this was kind of the core of what we were feeling about the mayoral race. And we couldn't think of anyone better to get that message out than chance. Chance is a beloved public figure who represents these ideals, and the media also can't help but cover him obsessively. And at this point, the idea was kind of starting to take shape. Uh, we took inspiration from the existing hashtag Chano for Mayor, which is based on a lyric from one of his songs. We saw that it was out there and that it was clearly a joke, but that it was really interesting to think about, like, what if it wasn't a joke? Um, what if it was a real campaign? And maybe better than that, what if it past the political campaign Turing test, where you like couldn't tell the difference between a real campaign and this fake campaign that you saw online, which would mean like it would have a beautiful website, it was very professional, it would have like a staff that would interact with you on social media. And so we decided that it would kind of be fun if we built that. So what we did is we got together around a uh, kitchen table, actually at Pia's apartment in Pilsen, and we decided what are our goals. And so the first goal is definitely if we could turn this into a way to meet Chance, uh, because we're all big fanboys and fangirls, that would be number one. Um, we also thought that this could get some media attention um, just because of the nature of the idea, because it could use this interesting rapper of Chance to talk about politics in Chicago. And then we, we started thinking that, okay, maybe we could use this as an opportunity to get young people more excited about the election. Like, the hook is Chance maybe running for mayor, and then use that to draw people to information, facts, and tools about the election. You know, like kind of a, a rapper around some boring old school stuff, if you will. Okay, cool. So here's how we did it. Basically, we spent a lot of time actually, what we didn't do was spending a lot of time building technology, but what we did do was spend a lot of time thinking of the narrative arc for the project. 
and we decided on a narrative arc that would have three stages. So it opened with an open letter to Chicago. That was what Jean uh, read from and taught to you about. So basically explaining what are the big problems that we see, like what is the situation. Then we did an open letter to Chance where we said, hey Chance, we think you could do an amazing job actually as mayor, and here's why your campaign could probably succeed. And then finally, we had a FAQ section about, okay, well, if you're interested in getting involved, how do you sign up to vote? Who's allowed to vote? And only 30, less than 33% of eligible voters voted in the last Chicago mayoral election. So what does that tell you? That tells you that most people are not participating. And we want to create a campaign, basically, that would change that and get more people excited and registered and um, able to participate in the democratic process in Chicago. And as important as the website was the Twitter presence, too, because we knew that a lot of people would be interacting with us mainly through Twitter. So there were two main components to our Twitter strategy. The first was that we were going to retweet content related to Chano for Mayor, as well as like news about issues that Chance cared about, just news about Chance in kind of this political light, kind of in the way that you would see a real campaign do. And then the second component was that we were going to have a Twitter bot where people could interact with us and make memes about Chano for Mayor. So these are what some of the memes looked like. The basic idea of it was that people would tweet at us. They would mention us. Uh, we would have a little bot that would automatically grab a Creative Commons licensed image and put their text on top with some random emojis. And then that would send us an email alert, and we could go in and reply to that person with the image that they generated. We could have made it fully automatic, but we decided not to because we've seen the horrible things that happen to bots on Twitter. And we knew that it was like important that there was a human screen here so that we could kind of direct uh, lightly the way that the conversation was happening. I don't think that we actually got any serious abuse of the bot, uh, but there's real potential for that. And, and it was something that we thought pretty deliberately about. So the website and the Twitter bot were the two key components that we built before launching. And we were actually really surprised by the reaction to our launch. Yeah, we were pretty surprised because we were, you know, had just been doing this for making it for a couple of weeks. There were just four of us, but damn, we were in the Trib, we were in the Sun Times, uh, ABC, Chicago, and then all of these music blogs, uh, Complex, Fader. So basically, like both the all the Chicago media and all the kind of big music blog sites covered the idea, which I think is pretty powerful and just goes to show that. Like four people can make a website that a lot of news outlets will can take seriously um, if you put the time into crafting the right narrative arc and building a site that looks legit. Um, but you know, we we also got uh, an ebony cover story, totally. um, which actually was it wasn't really about us, but it was pretty clearly influenced by <laughs> the campaign. So they took it a step further than we did, and they did quote us. Yeah. We also reached a place that we're pretty excited to share with you because it's a place that no civic tech project has ever reached before. And we're pretty proud, we think, to be the first ones to do it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so in case you don't know, that is the Canadian artist known as Drake. And he endorsed our project, which we were pretty <laughs> proud of. But actually, he is not the, pers the most important person to endorse our project. Because the most important people who responded to the project were just young people across Chicago. Because we started getting texts and Twitter DMs of fan art that popped up and chalk art in the street saying chance for mayor and that felt really cool and what we realized that we had kind of done is made a feedback loop because we started looking at this hashtag that we didn't make up like basically kids made it up who were smarter than us and like more advanced because they already saw that they were out there tweeting channel for mayor chance for mayor but there was actually like hundreds of tweets saying chance for mayor after he announced his million dollar gift to cps but what we were able to do was take that idea and give it a politically imaginative campaign with letters and narrative and uh, design. And then once that got out there, that kind of completed the loop because then that got out through music blogs and the news. Uh, and then people took that and turned it into art and posters. So we, it kind of went full circle. 
It was also like people making fan art of our fan art, which is pretty cool too, when you think about it. So to us, the most important lessons of the campaign were first, that a small and engaging idea can be more powerful than really cool tech. As Alec, men Alex mentioned, our project was really, really simple. And I think the most important part of it was really just this kind of small website that communicated uh, a little seed of an idea that we had. The second lesson is that narrative arc is really important to a project. And I think this applies even to projects that do have really cool tech. Uh, you should think about what people's gut impression is going to be of your project, but they'll take away with it only if they, uh, if they only spend 30 seconds with your project. And make sure that you can tell them a story that will stick with them in that 30 seconds. It's also a great exercise in thinking about how you might pitch your project to media outlets, too, who are really just going to kind of glance at what you're doing and decide whether or not it's relevant to folks. Third, uh, creating a conversation can be a valuable thing to do in itself. We were able to get a lot of young people talking about what a good mayor meant to them. We boosted the hashtag count for Chano for Mayor into the thousands, which was really cool. And we were able to get connected with people who were worried about similar issues that we are, uh, just by demoing the project for friends and by putting it out in the public eye. And finally, we learned that you should work as simple and as fast as you possibly can. Focus on getting something out the door and into the public before you lose steam, because it can be really, really easy to get bogged down in the technical weeds of a project and forget kind of that core message that you're trying to put into people's minds. So some things didn't work, and we want to be honest with you about that, because why not, you know, like why go and talk to civic tech people if you don't share lessons learned? So first of all, we failed in our goal to meet chance. Um, that's unfortunate. So far, who knows, there's always room for more plot twists. But um, yeah, he didn't engage directly. Um, the Twitter bot was not as popular as we wanted it to be. And that was kind of interesting to us because that w technically, that was the most time. Like, man, Gene spent a lot of time like polishing that and automating it and getting it ready to defend against abuse. But I think the lesson there is sometimes like look around at your project and sometimes the most complicated part might not actually be the most important or effective part. It might be the simplest part. Um, and then finally, we wanted to work with some of the community groups that Chance is really involved in. Like he has an open mic reading series and is super involved with a lot of amazing groups about young people and the arts in Chicago. And we wanted to get their feedback. Um, we basically, there's always this tension in a project between a small group of people doing something fast and versus really being community driven and spending the time to talk to like hundreds of people and get their input and help. And I think what we learned here was if you want to do that second thing, you have to start at the very beginning because we pretty much were ready, ooh, we're ready to uh, launch the project and we didn't want to hold it up like with weeks and weeks of revision. So if you want to do community driven, um, start from the very beginning, but then also launching, you'll meet people in the community who can help you um, think more and do different stuff. So, you know, just launch. Yeah. So to be totally clear, Chance isn't running for mayor. But even though he said no, it's left us thinking about who we do want to run. Uh, it's been an interesting time. We've been in touch with some folks uh, who are kind of laying down foundations, but no one has really confirmed anything yet. And who knows, it could really even be you. 2019 is a long way away from now. Uh, and in the meantime, we'll be iterating on some of the ideas that we had here that might help generate a movement around whichever candidate runs. So next year, we're planning to mobilize our network in favor of the most progressive candidate who decides to run. We're planning to get linked up with community organizations, like Alex mentioned, who are doing some of this work on the ground already. Um, and Alex is launching a new project that puts some of the lessons about storytelling that we learned into practice fundraising for progressive causes. So if you want to just talk about that for a little bit. Sure. Some of you who are here last week got a preview, but basically at wegivewen.com, we're trying to do storytelling around a bunch of political campaigns, including this one, which is uh, Will Gazzardi, who's a state rep, and he is helping to lead the fight for a $15 minimum wage. And so, for example, on this site, we're trying to create like storytelling around the fact that McDonald's is donating and Walmart is donating to candidates every single month to try to keep a $15 minimum wage from happening and kind of use that to build tension and get people engaged and involved in fighting back and creating the response. Thanks very much. Um, can you have
Uh, thank you very much. I thought your, your, your web, the website was really cool. W one question I had was now that you've kind of got the framework set up, have you thought about maybe going back a little bit and instead of making it about chance running for mayor per se, just about like what kind of making it like a site where people could, in, could envision what they'd like their ideal candidate for mayor to address in terms of like what issues do they would they actually want the mayor to tackle and have you thought about also not limiting yourselves to rather than finding a person who's alive right now who could run for mayor looking at like some mayors from the past right? I don't know like Mayor LaGuardia any of the other like characters in like cities past to see like what might those mayors have done a little differently if they were running Chicago. I'll answer the first half. I think that's a good idea. You should join us. <laughs> or really, I think you should just do it. I think it's a great idea. I think it's, um, we, we focused on chance because I think a lot of people have trouble with that question, like thinking about who would be a good mayor. I think also a lot of people don't feel empowered to answer the question like who would be a good mayor too. So that was one thing we were trying to do with chance, who's like admittedly a kind of strange choice or would seem like a strange choice to a lot of people but we felt like to us he represented the things that we cared about and that we hoped like people who weren't empowered to imagine candidates might care about too but I like your idea a lot I would have a lot of fun with kind of a build your own mayor website kind of like build a bear yeah. um, but with a mayor of Chicago <laughs> Mr. Potato Head uh, Mr. Potato Head it reminds me a lot of what the fantasy civic folks are doing too so that could be a fun component of that project too but I think for the future we're probably gonna stay constrained to talking about chance uh, we also have the URL and we'd have to change the URL too <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so it sounds like you guys excited a lot of like-minded people. Um, you got a lot of activity and a lot of energy going. But what about outside of that group? Did you kind of pierce any uh, filter bubbles? Mm -hmm. Do you want to grab that one, Alex? Well, we can. I think we can both answer every question because why not? We have different ideas because we're different <laughs> humans. But um, I, at least my initial thought is like, maybe we like. Uh, I don't know. Sixty-six percent of people didn't vote in recent Chicago elections. So maybe the most important thing isn't to get through filter bubbles, but to activate people who aren't engaged or feel like it doesn't make a difference or their imagination isn't excited by the options on the table right now. But so I don't know, that's kind of where my brain is at. Like, so I don't know, what about the people who are making, they're in the bubble of like not caring or not feeling empowered. So I don't know, that's kind of the bubble I think we were going for. Yeah, I think when I think about filter bubbles, I think about like Chicago being the most segregated city in the country by a lot of measures. Um, and I don't know if we did anything to like fix that in any way. I don't know if we will in the future. But I think that is something that I'll be thinking about a lot going into next year and going into 2019 is like what would it take to build a movement um, that crossed what I think of as the biggest filter bubble boundary in Chicago, which is the race boundary. Um, thinking a lot about like Harold Washington in that effort too and our legacy of, of race in Chicago politics. So I don't know if that directly answers your question, but it's what, what I think about. Thanks. Hey, um, over yes. here. Uh, you talked about, I mean, you guys said that you didn't meet Chance, um, unfortunately, but do you know if Chance knows about this at, at all? <laughs> That's a good question. Do you know, Alex? Well, he responded to Drake's tweet. Yeah, he, yeah I think so. I mean, yeah, I think so. Because he responded, so Drake, so here's, here's how it went. Okay, so TMZ, I think, put the mic in front of Drake, and Drake said, chance to be a good mayor, and then TMZ tweeted that, and then Drake on Twitter said, yeah, chance for mayor, and then chance said to Drake, Thanks. I'm not running. Thanks. I'm not. Yeah, but like he, he wasn't running. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> so we think he knows, but you know, he has he has bigger priorities. To be fair, yeah. like I would rather him work on his music and his activism so than hang out. So I with didn't us. want you to mention, but honestly, he's my neighbor, so I could oh. keep you in touch if you, if you. <laughs> that that'd be cool. Oh. You can invite us to the block really, party. really, really. Yeah. I'm so curious where he lives, but I don't want to put him on blast. So we should talk. I'm going to tell After you this. afterwards, yeah. <laughs> so I'm not kidding. He, he, he really is my neighbor, so. That's very, I think that he. Nobody he, tweet that, by the way. That yeah. would be bad. <laughs> we know where he lives now. Oh. Um, I, I don't think that he, it's also complicated because he's in this position where, like, his dad 
was chief of staff, I think, for Rahm Emanuel. Um, he worked in city government for a long time. So he's like, he has his own kind of like political relationships with the city and he's been very careful about maintaining kind of like neutrality around there. So I don't know if he's in a position to acknowledge the campaign really at all. But I would be so surprised if he didn't know, you know, like when, when Drake speaks, the world turns. Yeah. So um, we got a question on the, the Google Slides here that was, can you talk more about the process for crafting a narrative around the project? What were some concepts or narratives that you decided not to include? And I can just jump really quickly on this. Uh, one thing that came up a lot was we, we had a lot of negative feelings going into it. Um, and a lot of what we talked about initially was everything that we felt was really wrong with the city. But we made a pretty conscious decision to keep that limited, to also keep it, to make it not about like an, an anti Rahm Emanuel site, to make it more about kind of our hopes and dreams for what the city of Chicago could be. Do you want to? OK, Alex isn't going to add on to that. But yeah, that's the first thing I think of. Yeah, Eric. Um, I want to try to get as nerdy as possible with this project. Um, so you guys mentioned how like the Twitter bot, you spent a lot of time building it and you didn't get as much response, uh, but you guys got a lot of good media response and I was curious if you guys did any tracking of like page views or click views, um, whether or not there was like a feedback loop between media and then people actually visiting the site and maybe looking and spending time and like reading the narrative arc that you guys wrote, or if it was more like the media looking at this website thinking it looks pretty legit and kind of just putting this story out. So I wonder if you guys got any like analytics on like the behavior of like how people use the site and, and how that may be related to media coverage or not? Yeah, that's a great question. We did collect a lot of events through Piwik. And uh, Khalil set that up. We haven't actually dug into it yet, but it is on our list to kind of go through and try to figure out some of those questions. Um, because I think, yeah, there could be a whole, uh, a whole treasure trove of information in there about what is successful. Um, I was just curious about the choice of Twitter as like the primary platform to kind of engage people. I know you guys were worried about abuse and stuff, but like, was it mostly constructive? Did you guys like find other channels or other like platforms to really push it on? Like, was it, you know, received in mass or the volume you expected? I mean, I, I, from my point of view, Twitter is kind of natural because that's where the hashtag started. And that's where I first saw the kind of for mayor hashtag. So that seemed to make sense. And um, I don't know, I think Twitter is actually like a really amazing space for uh, talking about both politics and technology and music. And this is all three, so it just seemed to make sense. Yeah. It was something we were familiar with, too. And I think if we had, like, if this were a real campaign, we would probably have to think more seriously about expanding across platforms. It would have made a lot of sense to do stuff with Snapchat, to be honest, like, especially considering that, like, working with young people was so important to us. And it's uh, just like, Old, Twitter is mostly old people, it seems like. That's actually my, my anecdotal feeling, and I don't, don't quote me on that. But um, it feels like a little bit of an older platform. So it's true that there's kind of an interesting tension there between us like choosing Twitter but being really more interested in young people. And I think it could have been an interesting uh, different take to like go to Instagram and Snapchat first as like our primary social media drivers. I think we have time for one more question. We also have a question that's in the chat here that we could give the last one. Uh, so now that you've created slash amplified this movement, are there any plans to use its power, or does it end with Chance saying no? What do you think, Alex? We do have plans to use its power. So you'll have <laughs> to follow <laughs> Channel 2K2019. Channel for Mayor 2K19. Yeah, you have to follow us on Twitter and and our perhaps soon to be now Snapchat and Instagram accounts <laughs> to stay afloat with the latest news because who knows what could happen. It's a crazy yeah. time. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much. <laughs>